Greetings. Uh, welcome to Chase Life. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the planning that went into uh, my upcoming AT attempt at a through hike. Um, yeah, so first of all, I, a couple of things. One is that, um, yeah, I'm not like normal people, <laughs> so um, I'm a bit autistic and um, I have this need to plan stuff. I, I just can't, probably to a level that most people would never really, like, they think, it, it, it would probably be pretty insane. Um, I sometimes fight it, um, but it is what it is. Uh, the other thing is, is that I do not, by planning, I don't necessarily then think this is exactly how it's going to go because I know it's not going to go this way. In fact, it's probably going to go very different, but it's a starting point for me. So, um, and, and I internally need that. I need, I need a kind of a, a, a thing where I can kind of plan around. So, um, so, so there's that. Over the years, I've planned a number of uh, like caravans across the USA and stuff like that, and trips to other countries. And I, I do tend to plan it down to the minute. Uh, you know, like it'll be 8:37, we leave the gas station, kind of a thing. Um, and and it's kind of amusing, I guess. But uh, I, I find it actually works mostly. But it also, I also t typically have um, backups. I have contingencies. I, it's not like I just, I'm rigid to it and that's the only way it's going to go and I'm gonna be bothered or thrown off if it doesn't go that way. That's not the case at all. Um, I actually often have a lot of different things I can do when things change or, or I have to shift. And I'm, I'm sure that that's the way it's going to be on the Appalachian Trail. The trail dictates a lot of what's going to happen, weather's gonna dictate things. Um, there's a lot I don't know. I mean, I can't say for sure how many miles I'll hike each day. It would be silly for me to say, oh, I will definitely do that. Um, but it's a goal and it's a starting point, as I said. So that's what we're doing. Um, so I wanna go into a little bit about what our planning is. Um, so uh, step one in planning was to first to determine like, well, I mean, we obviously were walking along the Appalachian Trail and our intent is to do all of the trail and not miss any of it. But also, what points were we actually going to stop at? Um, you know, our, what hostels would would be like a oh, don't miss. Uh, what what vistas? What viewpoints? What what sites? What what areas are things that I really wanted to see? So I started putting those into my spreadsheet, and I use the based on miles from Springer as the reference point because that seems to be the common reference point everyone uses. So you know, you know that oh, I want to see Dragon's Tooth, or I want to see. Um, Klingham's Dome or you know whatever and obviously some of those you, you you would not miss anyways but there were some probably more obscure things and I'm like so I entered all these in my spreadsheet I entered in the hostels I definitely wanted to see and I researched hostels a lot I I followed uh, uh, things like on uh, whiteblaze.net and I also looked at a bunch of the YouTube videos on different hostels and seeing what hostels I wanted to stay at um, maybe trying to rule out what hostels I didn't want to stay at. And it's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of things along the trail, a lot of stops, a lot of hostels, a lot of uh, points of interest. And and so, you know, I, I, I didn't want to commit all this to try to commit this to memory. So I, I ended all those into my spreadsheet based on distance from Springer. And then I was able to then look at um, my hiking and actually pick the points where I would start hiking. So this is the... Uh... <clears throat> way I've been planning the uh, AT hike. So what we do first is uh, I have the spreadsheet where I have basically every day of hiking listed. And so I've gotten this far now and you can kind of see that it's been a, a bunch of stuff in here. This is the actual miles um, in the next column, the miles from the start. Uh, so that makes it easier to correlate to other resources, especially far out. Um, this next column is the actual miles we walk because we basically skip most of Virginia or all of Virginia and some other stuff. So we'll go back and do that, of course, afterwards, but th that's because of our flip. Um, the next column is the actual miles walked that day. The next column is the elevation that day to tell me stuff. I've got some links. I got notes. Th this column here is like everything that I've noted that I want to see and don't want to miss. So make sure to to, to stop at. So what, what I do is for each day is I then go to my next app, um, which I'm using, 
which is Gaia GPS. And um, you can see on Gaia GPS, I really like this app. This is from, this is my last um, hike uh, day, what I'm calling Flip 50, which is the 50th day after we hit uh, Harper's Ferry. And I, I just note where to and where from, from and to, and you can see the elevation. So the important numbers here are the 14.5 miles and I'm hiking up 3,920 feet of elevation. And so what I'm, my goal is to roughly average 15 uh, miles per day, sometimes a little more, sometimes gonna be a little less depending on where we end up, and uh, not to exceed too many times over 4,000 feet of elevation. So sometimes this number, the distance can get longer if the elevation number is lower and vice versa. So yeah, so what we do here is we just click route and um, and then it starts with a brand new route. And I come over here to where I was before when I uh, last stopped the hike and, um, and click where we're starting from. So in this case, we're getting dropped off by the van at this point. And then you just click again along the Appalachian Trail and you can see now that it there. So they're updated and now it, um, it's, it doesn't always update right away the uh, distance. So you'll have to keep going. So now I will just keep going. And it, if you click certain areas, it'll actually take a road or another trail. So then you just have to move your marker back or reset your marker. There is an undo function, which is very useful down here at the bottom. And um, but here you can see that it it recalculated and now it's at 1.58 miles, 725 feet. So one of the nice things about Gaia GPS is that you can use it for um, just about checking the elevation any two points. So even if it's not like what, the what you're doing for the day, you can actually just click a start and an end and it'll tell you how, how much distance and how much elevation there is. So I would just keep doing this. So one of the things that I'm using here, I would... Uh, click here and if that works then we click down here and let it think for a second boom so now we're at 5.48 and 1504 feet of elevation so you can actually see this is a pretty hilly area that's that's a healthy amount of elevation um, so here we hit uh, one of our things where we, we want to go and see the, you know, do we have a parking area? So at this point, I don't know if I'm going to be, where I'm going to end up. I, you know, I'm just going and accumulating the miles in elevation. And, um, you know, so I, I kind of in the back of my head go, well, 6.42 miles, it's kind of early to actually meet the van or anything like that. But if I want to know, like, is this really a parking area? Um, you know, so then I go and use my, uh, far out app and take a look on there. And, um, but also I use, uh, Google maps. So I go to Google maps and I look at where I last was. So one of the, uh, challenges is making sure that you're synced up in terms of location between Gaia GPS, far out and the Google maps. Um, so you scroll along and look for the same place. So here we see Elm Street, and then we go back to Gaia GPS and zoom in. And, uh, oops, I really don't want to zoom in that far. But, uh, yeah, so this is the same place as this. So the question is, is I look and see this Elm Street Appalachian Trail of parking, is it really a, a suitable road and a suitable parking area? Many of them are actually not. They're on mountain forest roads, or there really isn't much of a parking area. Um, so when I go and I look at satellite view and check and see what does it look like. So here we can see that we can't really see anything. If you click on it, sometimes you'll show a picture um, of what it looks like, and you can kind of go through the pictures and so here's an area where we can see oh okay so is it paved it looks paved 
Um, so I'll go back and sometimes you can use street view or in this case there is no street view. So the question is, is this street really usable for us? Um, you know, if you have a four wheel drive and you don't, you know, you know, you're fine with going off, off road, then that's fine. Um, but for us, you know, where the question was, how do you figure out if this is actually a, a good enough road? So we'll go back to regular map view and see, can we look at it here and we can actually see the beginning of the road as it comes off Elm. And you can see, yeah, it's paved and it looks like a nice road. So this would be an acceptable place to stop. I would add that to my places. Um, and so then I would make a note and then go back to far out and use that information to tell me exactly where. But make a note that there's a parking area on Elm Street. So I go back to my spreadsheet. I'm just going to make a note here that there is a parking area on Elm Street. So once I do that, then I go back to the uh, Gaia GPS and I continue and we say like, where is the Appalachian Trail going from here? So sometimes it's very hard to tell. I, we're obviously on some sort of city streets. Um, so then I go back to Far Out, which is more clear on where exactly the Appalachian Trail is. And I use that to tell me where to click next. So we'll let it keep going. Um, we can see that the Appalachian Trail is going to cross this bridge here. So if we clicked over here, for example, and just kind of see what the thing thinks about in terms of how to get there um, and see if it takes a shortcut. Okay, so that looks good. So now we're at 8.35 miles and 1,691 feet of elevation. So then we go to the next Appalachian Trail section and you can see that it goes over here. And then we, we start getting to the point where we start thinking like, do we want to stop and do we want to go to a shelter? Uh, do we want to find a good tent site? So even when I see shelters and tent sites, then I also am looking at far out. And as I go through far out, I, um, I, I check and see what the comments are and the description and see if there's really tent sites. And sometimes there's just a shelter and not a tent site. So that would be an option so in this case for example we're looking at this velvet rock shelter and I'm like well maybe we should stay there there's tents you know there and and here you can see where the the guy at gps went and said oh okay so so what i'm going to do um and and took the road instead of the trail which is obviously going to be quicker so i'm going to move the endpoint over here and kind of try to force it to use the trail instead which it should and uh, so even now it's not it's still going through some weird areas you can see the trail is actually over here so i'm going to move it one more time and you can just hit undo and redo but i mean it's just easy to grab the endpoint. the uh, only negative of course is that it, it does take you know t 15 seconds while it figures out um yeah so i'll i can go in here and tweak is that actually ex where um this thing is but um just for expediency, I'll go back and tweak this to make it better. But um, let's say I'm going over here. And at this point, um, let it figure out how to do that. Um, and you can also just grab. See, in this case, it took the road. So I can just grab that and pull it down here and add a waypoint, basically, to the trail. And it'll recalculate. Um, anyways, I'm... I'm even though it's a little fiddly, I'm I'm really impressed with this uh, guy GPS, and it's a free app. I mean, you you could, there's a monthly thing if you want to pay for it, but I don't really see any need to do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab and move it down here so it follows the things there. And at this point, we're up to uh, 10.7 2308 miles. Um, so still a pretty short day. Um, Probably want to keep going. You can see that here it's going through the shelter trail. So we want to go here. And then we're going to go and click over here. And yeah, I would I would do a video screen capture thingy, but this was just quicker and easier just to kind of show you what I'm doing. 
Um, so at this point, I'm over here, and I'm now at uh, passing this road um, in a cemetery. So this is Etna Road, and uh, I'm at 14.6 and 3,120 feet. So I'm actually getting close to the end of my walking day, and I can either look and see, I'll scroll out a little bit and see, well, is there some place I'm gonna end up soon? Um, and I can see that there's a parking area here on Three Mile Road, and I wonder like, well, let's say if I just wanna try going there, and I click on that, and um, we'll see what it does. Again, I'm trying to hit roughly 15 miles. Um, so now we're at 16.8, 3682. That's a pretty good uh, distance for us. So I'm going to go and see Three Mile Road, go back to Google Maps, and follow the trail, which did go through the town here, and went over through here, came out here, and... Okay, so here is the trail. Etna Road was the one we looked at. So you can see there's parking here. Uh, may or may not be parking there. Sometimes I just note that there is parking in case for some reason we want to stop. Um, and this is the Three Mile Road trailhead. So again, we're going to go and look at what does that look like? I mean, is that a suitable ending spot for us? You know, is that a real road? Um, I don't see any... Uh, there's some pictures. Um, are we... Okay, we, we don't have street view, so let's look at the pictures. And it's a paved road. Um, with... Uh, not a bad parking area. So that's definitely a place we could stop. We can add that then and put that into our spreadsheet. So we go back to our spreadsheet. What we'll end up populating is the 16.8 and 36.82 elevation. And we'll populate um, where our stopping points are. Um, in this case, I didn't see a good place for us to, to tent camp. Um, if there was, and I would consider that. If not, I would just say, like, pick us up and we'll go find a, a campground or a hostel somewhere uh, with the van because we do have the van. You can see that <clears throat> there is like another shelter area here. And if I did click on that, I would probably be, let's see, um, close, but I didn't quite hit the shelter. But, uh, well, here again, we we need to drag our waypoint down to the trail and see what it does. But you can see that we're going, if you look at the topo lines too, you can see we're going up a mountain. And so at some point, the distance between our parking area and this shelter area is pretty significant because it's got a lot of climbing. So now we went to 18.7 and 4,427 4, 4, feet of, of climbing. And uh, I mean, it's doable, but, you know, it might have been maybe a longer day. It might be pushing ourselves for that. And now the trade-off also becomes if we're stopping at the shelter, that means we have to have full packs with all our equipment in it. And whereas if we're um, stopping here at a parking spot, we could have slack packed the entire way. And not a full slack pack, which is basically not, no reason to carry our tent and shelter, tent and uh, sleep system. So, um, yeah, that's the trade-offs we make and the decisions we make as we go along. So, that's it. That's my planning. Plug it back into the spreadsheet, and then we go to the next day. Um, this is a little time-consuming. You can see we've been doing quite a bit. And, and adding to this, too, is that I've already previously done uh, lodging um, and places I want to make sure I hit based on the mileage so that I can plug those in. I, I do a lot of color coding, and um, so we have 
links to plan, places to stay. This is the itinerary. These are lodging. We have suppliers and supplies. Um, yeah, this is my uh, backpack planning. So this is all the items. And, uh, and you can see here, I, I actually made a CAD drawing on my computer um, of how to pack my pack and what's all in there. And this makes it easier for me to remember to, I was basically like, it's checklist, right? And um, yeah, and then what goes in the van that supports us, things I need to get done. And uh, this is what I'm gonna log as I actually hike um, once I start. So that's our planning, um, yeah. It's obviously, admittedly, I, I'm aware that this is ridiculous, and um, yeah. So, but I, but this is kind of how I have to do things. To having this information makes it a lot easier for me, even if I know, and I do know that I, this is not going to be exactly what happens, of course. Um, but this is how I plan. <clears throat> I do road trips and other kind of things like this, and this is pretty much how I plan everything. Um, when I do a road trip, I, I know where I'm staying, I know what restaurant I'm stopping at, I know probably what I'm gonna order at that restaurant, because I search for their menus and do all the little stuff. Um, it's pretty much the polar opposite of the people who would just go to Walmart and REI, get a bunch of stuff, like you see in the movie Wild or uh, Walk in the Woods, you know, it's, I'm the opposite of that. I, I tend to overplan everything. And and it doesn't mean that this is rigid. It doesn't mean that there aren't uh, contingencies. And it doesn't mean that you don't make changes as you go, because we will. Um, but this gives me a lot of data to work from and starting points. I'll kind of have a better idea um, because of the complication, which I, I understand that, you know, having a van support is going to make this infinitely uh, easier, but it does add complication in terms of like, where do we meet? How do we park? What do we do there? Um, and uh, and I had kind of pretty much started this whole planning process prior to the van, and it was just, you know, figuring out where to pick up my uh, my my boxes for resupply, and what where, where the next Dollar General was, and all that. So now that's kind of all those points that I wa was planning and thinking about are all gone and replaced with, well, where do we meet the van? Um, I, I'm aware that uh, as the days go by, the, the possibility of those days being actually a real day that we do something is probably less likely, but that's understood. It's just, a, again, a, a, a dart throw at what we think is gonna happen. And again, it doesn't really matter if it's really not what happens. It, that isn't the point. Um, the point, one of the points of this again is information gathering and planning and mainly to make me less anxious. So yeah, the, I look at this as kind of a fun challenge of like how accurate will I be? Um, will it be any help at all? I'm aware it may not be. And um, you know, how, how, how right was I? And that'll be kind of like a game I'm gonna play with myself in just terms of like, was this really just a stupid thing to do? Or, you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that think, well, this is stupid. But um, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm.